Hi, this is Rick from the Biley RV Service Department. Today we're going to do a quick video on how to dewinterize your trailer and get it ready for the camping season. So the first step in dewinterizing is to get water to the trailer. There's two ways we can do this. We can put water into the fresh tank through our gravity fill, or we can just hook a hose straight up to the city water fill. In this case, we're going to use the city water. So once we get it hooked up, then we're gonna go around, we'll turn on the hose. Okay, so once we get our water on and hooked up, then we're gonna come inside and generally you go to the furthest point in the trailer to where you're hooked up with the water. So our water hookup was at our driver's side front corner. So the sink in this one in the kitchen is all the way here in the back. So we've come in here, we're just going to turn on the cold water and we'll let it run for a moment until Basically, we're looking for the foam to stop running in it. Sometimes you have to come back to this sink after you've done the other lines, but generally, if, once you get it, it's done. So once we're done in the kitchen, we're gonna come into the bathroom. We'll start here at the bathroom sink. And again, we're just gonna turn the water on, let it run until the pink is done and the bubbles are out. Once we're done with the sink, then we'll move over to the toilet. This is a foot flush toilet. So, just gonna press it and hold it. This takes, this is pretty quick. We'll let it run for a moment just to make sure that we are getting all the antifreeze out of the line. So once we've done the sink and the toilet, then we'll move around and we'll do the shower. So I'm gonna grab the hose and pull it out and I'm gonna, when I turn it on, that way I can make sure it sprays down into the, into the shower stall. Here again, because we flushed out the other lines, it won't take long to get the antifreeze out of these lines. And since there was a little antifreeze left in the shower stall on this one, I'll use the fresh water that we're pumping through here to kind of wash that out. And that's all there is on the shower. So once we're done on the inside, then we're gonna move on to our water heater and taking it out of its winterized position. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it on inside and we're gonna let some water run out through it just to flush any sediment or anything that is accumulated over the course of the winter because we always leave our plugs out of it. So I'll usually let that run for about a minute or so. And it, like I said, it just flushes the debris out of the tank that's accumulated over the winter. Then I'll come back, I'll turn off the cold water inside and I'll come back out and I'll put in our plug. So this is a suburban water heater. So it uses an anode rod. This is the anode rod. You find these in the suburban water heaters. Person would look at this and say, oh, that's bad. It's all eaten up and chewed up and it's got a spot missing in it. But in reality, this anode rod is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's sacrificing itself so the inside of your water heater doesn't get eaten out. So the reason why it does that, electrolysis will eat the metal because it's a, a steel water heater with a glass lining in it. So that would be eaten from the inside due to the electrolysis. This aluminum rod actually sacrifices itself to keep your water heater from being deteriorated from the inside out. The Atwood water heaters just simply use a plug in them. So this is the one place where you will definitely have to have a tool. The anode rod takes an inch and a 16th socket. If you got the Atwoods with just a plug in it, it's either gonna take a 7 8 or a 15 16 socket. So we're just gonna tighten this in. Like so. Once we've got our anode rod back in, we'll go inside. We're gonna turn on our cold water and our hot water this time and allow water to enter the water heater. So what we'll do is we'll open up the pressure relief valve. Once the water gets coming out of it, then we can close it up and then we can go back inside and burp the rest of the air out of the hot water side of the system. So once we get the water coming out through the pressure relief, we'll just go ahead and turn it off and then we can go into any of the hot water faucets on the inside and just open it up until the air bleeds out the rest of the way and then you're done and you're ready to use that camper.
your family show.